Hi, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. We're going to be continuing our Descent playthrough in a moment, but I do have a couple corrections I need to make. In the previous turn, one of my cave spires attacked and damaged Leoric, but I forgot to apply the Word of Misery Overlord card that was in effect at the time. That would have enabled me to add another Fatigue token to Leoric, so I'm going to do that now. We all know if you roll an X on the blue die, that means the attack is a miss and you ignore all other results rolled, including surges, so you can't spend surges that you might have rolled. But what happens if you miss a ranged attack, not because you rolled an X, but because you didn't roll enough range to hit? Are you still not allowed to spend the surges? Well, I went into the rule book and I could not find a clear answer on that. I went to the FAQ, couldn't find it addressed there. I went online, there was even more chaos there, lots of debate and discussion. But I did find buried in one of the threads a comment from the game design manager at Fantasy Flight Games that seemed to indicate if you don't roll enough range on a ranged attack, and although the attack is a miss and you won't be doing damage, you can still spend surges that you might have rolled. For example, the orc who missed attacking the cave spider could have spent a surge to remove a fatigue token. So that one I just added, I'm going to be removing. The other thing we know is that when you do a move action, that's the only action that can be interrupted with another action and then resumed. So when Luke moved Avrik over to that token to do a search and then found the key, he still had one movement point left over and we both kind of forgot about it and we really shouldn't have. So that means Avrik could have moved one more space, which we're going to do now. He would have wanted to move, of course, back towards his companions. Okay, I think that's all of the mistakes corrected. When we come back, Luke's going to join me and we're going to continue our Descent playthrough. Okay, we're back, and we've been joined by... Luke Smith. Now, Luke, what did you think of the player's suggestions this time around? Good strategies. Yes, we did get a great suggestion from Android Fugitoid, Fugitoid? Fug something like that. Fugitoid? <laughs> yeah, something like that. And really, there was a lot to manage here. Three heroes. Um, so we're going to get you to the table, and we're going to see how Android Fugitoid wants us to proceed. So first, Avrik is going to move. One, two, three, four. Like that. Okay, that used up all of his movement points. What's the next action going to be? Well, now Avrik is going to use Prayer of Healing on Grisbin. Yeah, Grisbin's not looking so good. He no. could use a little patch up. So Prayer of Healing is a skill card that Avrik can use by spending one fatigue token and then exhausting the card itself. This will allow him to either target himself or an adjacent hero, then roll a single red die. And for every heart rolled, remove that number of wounds from the targeted hero. And who are you going to target, Luke? Grisbin. Yes, of course. So Luke, while you exhaust the card, I'm going to add the fatigue token to Avrik. I want to see a bunch of hearts. Okay, Aww. that's not quite a bunch, but that will allow one damage to be removed from Grisbin. Well, Grisbin is up next, Luke. What's he going to do? Attack the Enten. Not surprised at all, but this is where I realized what a mistake I made last turn. I should have moved the Etten back at least one space. That way, Luke would have had to spend his first action moving. Now, he's going to be able to spend both of his actions attacking. And you're attacking with the chipped great axe, which is going to give you which dice? Red and the blue. Go ahead and roll them up. Oh, pretty Ooh. good, too. We've got three hits on that die and a fourth hit there, plus one surge, which you'll be able to spend after I roll my defense dice. Thankfully, I get two gray dice. Wow, I rolled awesome there. Four shields. Now, how would you like to spend that surge? I'm going to use the surge on the great axe. All right, well, that's going to give you plus one to your damage, and that means I am going to have to add one more damage to the Etten. He now has two hits left on him before he is taken off the map. So I'm guessing you're going to want to attack again. Yep. All right. Well, you go ahead and roll that red and blue die again. Let's see what you get this time. 
Oh, Aww. no way, Luke. That's a total miss. A total miss. So my Etten is spared. I thought for sure he was going to be gone this round. I've got one hero left, Leoric. Yes, it's going to come down to Leoric for you this turn. Unfortunately, he's... Poisoned. That's right. And the condition card tells us that the beginning of Leoric's turn, he's going to have to do a strength attribute test. This involves rolling both the gray and the black die and trying to get less than his strength stat, which unfortunately is a one. So this, oh, is, going to be, this is going to be really difficult, Luke. But let's see what you can do. Okay, this is gonna be tough. Wow. Oh! <laughs> wow. Five. He was really poisoned. He's not feeling good at all. That means we're gonna have to add another wound to Leoric, and this condition is gonna last again for another full turn. You're gonna get another chance at the beginning of Leoric's next turn to do this roll again and maybe be able to remove the poison. So now I'm going to use my heroic feat. And Leoric's heroic feat is pretty impressive. It requires an action, but once used, he attacks with a magic weapon, like the arcane bolt. He's going to be rolling a yellow and blue die as normal, but now he ignores range. And he's going to be targeting every adjacent enemy to him. And that one attack roll is going to have to be defended separately for each enemy. So as you can see, Leoric is currently adjacent to all three of these spiders. So go ahead and roll that attack. I would love to see a miss right now. No such oh. luck. Instead, what we have here is three potential hits. Now I'm going to roll defense for the first spider. All right, I blocked one point of damage, so that means two got through. The regular spiders can take up to three points of damage. Now I'll roll for the next minion cave spider. Ah, another one, so I'm going to take another two points of damage. Thankfully, though, the spider is not defeated yet. Finally, I'm going to be rolling for the master version of the cave spider. This also gets one die, but it can take a total of five hits. All right, I'm very consistent <laughs> here. I'm going to be taking another two points of damage and placing that on the master cave spider. I'm not going to use my second action. I'm going to use fatigue to move here. Now, the master version of the cave spider has the web ability. And what that means is a hero leaving a space adjacent to this monster has to spend a single fatigue. So Luke actually spent two there, one to leave the webbing and another one to do the movement. So we're going to add these two fatigue and Leoric now has one fatigue left. Which I'm going to use to move here. All right, now you used up all of your fatigue but you still have a second action left. And this is sort of like Android's plan B, because now you're gonna use that second action to attack the Etten. Exactly. No question about line of sight here, drawing from this corner to this corner. Nothing interrupts the line. My Etten is once again in danger. There you go, look oh. at that. So we've got a total of three possible hits here. The range of three means it's gonna be a hit. Let's see if I can roll enough defense to render this attack useless. Come on, Etten! Oh, there it is! Oh, no wait, no it isn't. Because I'm spending a surge. That's right. To do what? Pierce 2. Pierce 2 means two of these armor rolls get ignored, which means I only blocked one hit. Two hits get through. That's oh. a total of eight damage that's on my Etten currently which removes him from the dungeon. Woo! <laughs> my poor Etten. <laughs> a moment of silence. My big beast. It, it took you a little longer, I think, than you thought. Yeah. To beat him. I thought he was maybe going to get defeated by uh, Grisman. But no, it took, uh, it took all the heroes working together to do that. Now, at the beginning of the Overlord turn is when I get my reinforcement step. And this is when I could bring out one monster from my open group. But none of the monsters in my open group died. So I can't add any more. And they're all kind of hurting right now. But I do get to draw an Overlord card. Not bad. And uh, now I get to take my turn. So let's get you guys back to the table and figure out what I'm going to do with my remaining cave spiders. As the Overlord, I know I'm in a lot of trouble right now. Not only does Grisbin have a clear path right to the objective, and he's holding two sets of keys, the ones the hero found and the ones they got when they killed the Etten, but also 
Android effectively set up this barrier here of heroes. There's no space for me to move around them so I can go after Grisbin. Instead, I'm going to have to work on softening up this wall. So I'm going to have my Master Spider do a move action, moving two points. He has two points of movement left over, but I'm going to interrupt that movement and do an attack. Now, keep in mind, Leoric has that hero ability so that all monsters within three spaces doing an attack do one less point of damage. Still, I get to roll a blue and a yellow die. Let's see what I get. That's not too bad. Ooh. Four points of damage plus a surge. But I get to roll my defense. You sure do. Go ahead, roll it up. All right, he blocked one point of damage with the die, another with his hero ability. I also have the surge to spend, which I'm going to activate right now to give the spider two additional points of damage for a grand total of four getting through which means Leoric only has two points of damage left. So now I'm going to continue that movement and move two spaces in this direction here. All right, I think that spider did pretty good. So now we're going to move on to the next spider I want to activate, which is this one right here, and it's going to do an attack. Here we go. Huh. <laughs> that... That wasn't so great. So actually, what I'm going to do is use my Dark Fortune Overlord card. And this says that I can play it after rolling dice to re-roll one of the dice. So I'm going to keep the blue die, because at least it has a surge, and I'm going to re-roll that yellow die. Come on. <laughs> Ugh, not great. <laughs> Especially when basically this can be removed since that hero ability subtracts one damage. Luke, you get to roll your defense. All you need to do is just roll one shield. Done. <laughs> and there it is. Mind you, I do have a surge that I can spend, and I will spend it. That will give another plus one to the damage. So one point gets through. Leoric is not feeling well. One more point of damage, and he is defeated. But I still have another action. I'm going to move this spider two spaces, like so. I'm going to have to put this damage token here, these two damage tokens beside him. All right, now I'm going to activate this spider here. I'm going to move it for its first action. I'm trying to create a wall of my own, and then I'm going to do another attack, and hopefully this will be the one to deal the killing blow to Leoric. Oh, that was really good. Four possible damage and a surge. Luke, you get to roll that defense. Only one damage is blocked. We have to take another damage away for the heroic ability. So two hits get through. If I wanted to, I could really do overkill, spend a surge to add another damage, and hey, why not? <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. Leoric has been defeated. So this means we're going to remove the model from the map and replace it with this token here. This actually gives me a point of entry now to chase down Grisbane because this token does not block line of sight or movement or anything like that. Seriously? Yes, Luke. Some revenge for my defeated Etten. Now you know how it feels. Well, when a hero is defeated, they of course, they take the maximum in damage that they can take and no more. They also take the maximum in fatigue. Mind you, Leoric was already at the maximum for yeah. fatigue. What happens next? Now we remove all conditions. That's right. So that poison condition is gone, which is good because that was going to be yeah. hard to remove. That's the one good thing about being defeated. Now Leoric, when it comes to Leoric's turn again, only has one action available, and that's to stand up, unless another hero revives him before that. Now another perk to defeating a hero is I get to draw a new Overlord card. One of my Overlord cards face up over here. Hmm, very interesting indeed. But I'm not done yet. I still have another spider to activate, the one carrying the idol. So let's go back to the table and see what I do there. Now, before I activate this monster, I'm going to play an Overlord card. Not again. Yes, again. This one is called Dash. Now, remember, normally, the rules of this idol mean that the spider can only move once during its activation. But Dash allows it to have another movement action. So this allows me to break the restriction that I have on this monster right now. So I'm going to go one two, three, four for my regular movement, then using dash go one, two, three, four, and ever closer to my objective. Well, that's going to end activating all of my monsters and my overlord turn. All right, it's the start of the fourth turn. The heroes get to go first. 
Which hero would you like to activate? Grisbin. And what's he going to do first? Move. Let's see it. One, two, three. And then what about a second action? Move. I'm not surprised. One, two, three. And now you're getting ever closer to the objective. Sure am. Well, a giant fallen. A mage lying in a crumple of robes and his spell book torn. Spiders eagerly scurrying towards their objective while a lone fat dwarf makes his way to a locked door. <laughs> What's going to happen next? You're going to help us decide. And you only have to focus on Avric and Leoric this time around because Luke's already activated Grisbane. Let us know what you want to do in the comments below. If you like what someone says, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like it, propose your own suggestion and maybe someone will vote for yours. Whatever gets the most votes, that's what we'll come back and do. But what I'm most curious about is whether or not we got through this episode mistake-free. What do you think? Mistake free. We, we did work pretty hard, didn't we? We tried to be very careful. I hope we are. Until the next episode, thanks, thanks for watching. watching.